Hello, Ryan here with another episode of Try Try My Darling, and today I'm going to be looking at Xenoblade Chronicles 2 on the Nintendo Switch. So, um, just kind of, I'm just kind of starting uh, this recording in the middle of a playthrough. Um, as you can see by the clock in the bottom right of my screen here, this is about three hours or so into the game. So I'm kind of finally out into the uh, open world portion. So I just kind of wanted to um, play a bit of that and uh, kind of just share some of my initial impressions of the game so far, um, which are uh, very positive. <laughs> um, I'm really, really loving what I've played of this game so far. Um, I guess as I'm kind of playing here, um, I'll give some like background on my, uh, my history with the series. Um, I guess it goes back to uh, the original PlayStation, um, my history with the Xeno uh, series, or meta series, I guess. Um, very loose connections um, between the games. Um, but yeah, I played Xenogears back in, um, you know, the late 90s. I was a big, uh, big Squaresoft fan from the uh, you know, from the NES and SNES days, and, uh, and then, you know, when they came over to the, when they moved to the PlayStation, I kind of followed all of their, um, you know, all their games there, and I would pretty much buy every, uh, every Squaresoft game that would come out, um, you know, from Final Fantasy to, uh, stuff like Xenogears, and Xenogears was just kind of one of those cases of, like, the right game at the right time, like, um, you know, I was, uh, uh, I guess in my late teens, early 20s, I was getting into, like, you know, like, the more existential Japanese anime and stuff like that, um, I was a huge Neon Genesis Evangelion fan, so... When, uh, when Xenogears dropped, I was pretty much like, this game is perfect, um, and I still love it a lot. Um, I know it, I know it has some flaws, but, um, you know, the whole, the whole package, it's one of my favorite, uh, PS1 games in general, and, um, I would probably actually rate it above um the numbered final fantasy games on uh on ps1 um for me personally um but uh yeah so you know i was a huge huge fan of um of the original xeno gears and then when xeno saga came out on uh ps2 uh, you know, I got the first one, um, the day it came out in the U.S. I'd actually already, um, in, I had already imported the, uh, the soundtrack from Japan before I even had the game, um, because I was such a huge fan of, um, the Xenogears soundtrack and, um, uh, Mitsuda's work in general, like, on stuff like Chrono Trigger and, uh, Chrono Cross, um, so I had imported the soundtrack, and um, I was kind of struck by how much more ambient sound uh, sounds there were, and uh, less of kind of like the Celtic uh, melodies and, uh, you know, beautiful orchestrations that I sort of associated with uh, Mitsuda's work, so I kind of went into um, Xenosaga a little bit uh, hesitant, and then um, when the game actually hit, um, I it didn't click with me in the same way that Xenogears did, and um, I think part of it was um, was honestly the kind of infamous uh, cutscene length. Um, 
getting a little bit of a tutorial here. Okay, yeah, there's been a lot of tutorials, um, you know, at this, throughout this, uh, um, point. Okay. Cool. Alright. Um, but yeah, the, the cutscenes were, uh, were rough. Um, I thought it, Xenosaga had an intriguing story, but, um, those cutscenes were long, and they were, uh, pretty stiffly acted. Um, the, you know, the English voice acting, there was no option for, uh, for Japanese voices or anything. Um, you know, this was, like, early PS2 era. Like, this is, um, you know, the, uh... It was still kind of a, you know, this was some of the first uh, batches of um, voice acted JRPGs. Like, it's just, like, slightly post uh, Final Fantasy X, um, which also had a somewhat rough English uh, um, delivery, I guess. But yeah, so it just... One way or another, um, you know, it just didn't click. I never actually played the rest of the Xenosaga series, um, 2 and 3, even though I heard 3 is uh, fantastic. Um, but I just, I never, uh, never finished, I never even finished the first one, let alone um, the other games in the series. So, um, so yeah, that was a kind of a bummer, but I was really excited when um, when Xenoblade was announced for the Wii, um, and you know, as soon as I saw that game, I knew I really wanted to uh, really wanted to play it. Um, unfortunately, it was uh, if you remember, it was quite the uh, um, issue. <laughs> getting that game localized and uh if you remember back in those days in the mid to late uh 2000s project rainfall all of that um with surrounding the localization of uh that guy looks tough um surrounding the localization of xenoblade um which finally came out as a GameStop exclusive, and uh, and when it finally um, actually came out, I got it, and I um, really, really enjoyed it. Um, I played dozens upon dozens of hours of that game, um, never actually finishing it, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, I don't know... Uh, you know, it was, uh, that was kind of a bummer, um, I just, I never finished it, and then when I, uh, transferred my, um, Wii to my Wii U, um, I had a ton of issues in that, uh, transferring process, and I ended up losing, um, all of my Wii save games. So the, whatever, I don't know, 40, 50, 60 hours I put into Xenoblade, I, uh, I kind of just lost, um, which was a huge, huge bummer because I did want to finish that game at some point. Um, you know, I played it again when it hit um, 3DS, and I thought that was a solid port. Um, I enjoyed it, but, like, I just didn't end up, um, you know, putting the time in, um, just because, you know, there's just been so much other stuff to play, um, in the interim, and, uh, so yeah, I never actually finished that game, but I have, uh, you know, I have a lot of, uh, love for it. I would like to finish it someday. We will see. Um... And then I guess that brings us to Xenoblade Chronicles X, which I was ridiculously excited for um, to come out on the Wii U. Um, I'm a huge uh, like mecha anime fan, and um, you know it. That game just seemed like um, 
you know a perfect combination of like open world jrpg and uh and mechs and um you know it kind of it kind of seemed like a dream game when it was uh when it was first uh first revealed and it was like you know a, a type of game we weren't really getting on the wii u and i was ridiculously excited for it um and then it uh it came out and kind of right off the bat i something just was not clicking uh for me um but you know i kept uh i kept pushing through and um i'm really just sort of like running around in circles here um <laughs> but uh uh i kept pushing through and like the deeper i pushed like the more um kind of annoyed i would get with the game um you know i thought some of the the open world traversal was really frustrating um i found the story kind of lacking um i could not even in i could not enjoy the soundtrack ironically um, <laughs> some people could, um, I certainly could not enjoy it sincerely. The soundtrack really, really bugged me in that game. And I, I loved the, um, Yoko Sh uh, Shimomura's score for, uh, the original Xenoblade Chronicles. I thought that was an excellent, excellent soundtrack. Um, she's another one of my favorite composers. Um, but yeah, I could not get in to uh xenoblade chronicles x at all and i put like i put a good i think 25 to 30 hours into it i really really did try but i did not enjoy that game um so i kind of approached uh this game um with uh proper cautious optimism uh, I wasn't really sure what to think about, like, the character designs when, uh, when it was first revealed. Um, kind of felt like they could go either way. Uh, and, you know, I was a little, I was a little hesitant. I also really thought, um, when they said 2017, uh, for the release date for this game... Um, I was definitely kind of one of those, uh, yeah, right, uh, people, and I just, I did not believe that, you know, um, Monolith Soft could get this game out in 2017, considering, like, you know, it wasn't, uh, too long ago that they had released Xenoblade Chronicles X, and also they had, uh, oh wow, that's really pretty, um, they had also worked on uh zelda breath of the wild which is just a massive masterpiece of a game and uh you know knowing that this was going to be another gigantic open world rpg with like really high production values and all that like i was like no way this game's coming out in 2017 but here i am on december 2nd 2017 uh playing this game in english uh which is insane um, so now, yeah, now here we are, I'm playing this game, and, uh, I, yeah, oh, I don't have any salvage materials, um, I absolutely love what I've played so far, um, I mean, man, we've got that, uh, Mitsuda score, he's back, and, uh, the soundtrack is incredible um like man just all over the place there's been like just in this first three hours there have been so many just like wonderful wonderful uh musical tracks and um you know the uh the art style um i think the art style overall is good um it's cool to be back in like a you know, super kind of anime style JRPG. Um, I do like uh, I do like that stuff. Um, I think uh, I think our girl Pyra here. Um, 
not the best design. Uh, that outfit, not great. I don't, uh, I think, I think we could have done a little better on that outfit. Um, and her, uh, I mean, her bust size is ridiculous. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just kind of, uh, kind of embarrassing. Um, I mean, there's just, there's no need for, like, a woman with that, uh, sort of body type to have that like noticeably ridiculous bus size um and that's not like this is not like sjw virtual sig signaling or whatever you would call it um this is just like it that's absurd it's silly um but it doesn't ruin the game for me um it you know doesn't really do anything it's just uh it's just a criticism i have of it but um, I think actually her as a character, um, I think, sh uh, she seems, uh, pretty interesting so far. Like, I definitely want to, uh, want to learn more about her. And so far I've really, uh, I've really liked all of the characters in the game, um, up to this point. And, um, there's actually, um, like... Even this early on, I've really enjoyed um, that with each character, there does seem to be, um, you know, it's already, like, hinting at, like, um, different levels of depth for the characters. And uh, something also I really like about them is they are legit funny. There is, like, some legit great humor both in dialogue and there's actually some surprising uh physical humor that is not really something i associate with uh this series there were some like clumsy stabs at physical humor i feel in uh, uh xenoblade chronicles x um and I think there was also some, uh, you know, some written humor that actually did land pretty well in, uh, the original Xenoblade Chronicles, but I feel like this game, um, it, it has a serious story, but I think overall, like, the tone is a little bit lighter, um, than both of those games, and, uh, and I think, like, the humor really, uh, really translates well um from what i've seen um you know it could go uh i mean you never know with uh with xeno games like it could go um straight up uh existential dilemmas and we could have our main character rex uh you know sitting in a lone folding chair with a spotlight on him uh for 10 hours of the game, you never know. Um, and I'm also pretty okay with that stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, so far I'm just, I'm, I really wasn't expecting the characters to be so, uh, kind of funny and, uh, the writing to be so humorous and, uh, heartwarming, I guess. There's been some, like, pretty, uh, there's already been some, like, pretty genuinely, um, heartwarming moments, which, uh, which is super cool, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, you know, I think because I approach this game with, um, some, like, cautious optimism, um, I think that's kind of, like, helped my, uh, expectations to be exceeded, but, like, my expectations are being, like, really exceeded here. Like, this is, uh, and maybe it's just, uh, you know, the right game at the right time again for me, but, like, this is, this is awesome. Like, this is something I've, uh, you know, I've been missing, uh, in my, in my gaming experiences this year and recently, and, um, you know, it's also something, like, I love, and, um, 
I'm just having a lot of fun with it um, so far. So, uh, yeah, as far as the combat, like, right now, it's still pretty simple. Um, you know, a lot of the back attacks and side attacks, uh, that's all stuff if, you know, from if you played the other Xenoblade games, uh, you kind of know your, uh, your whole positioning feel, but, um, if you haven't played one of these games, um, I think this is definitely probably the most e initially accessible, uh, game in the series. Um, I don't know how, you know, if that will last, but I, I mean, I remember with, uh, the original Xenoblade Chronicles, it was, um, it was just, it was such a new style of, um, combat and gameplay that, uh, it, it took some acclimating, and then with, uh, Chronicles X, like, I kind of had an idea of the foundations of, um, the gameplay and the combat, um, because it did borrow some systems from, uh, the original Chron uh, Chronicles, but at the same time, I thought there was a lot of, uh, there was, like, a lot more obtuse elements, and it almost, like, in a lot of areas gave you, like, if there's such a thing as too much choice, where you just kind of never really knew, um, what you should be doing, um, is kind of how I felt through a lot of that game, um, because I would just constantly be hitting, I would be, it would be going really smooth, and then I'd hit, like, a ridiculous difficulty spike, and I just could not figure out, like, what I was doing wrong, um, so, yeah, I feel with this one, it takes a lot of the foundational, um, elements from the, the combat of the other games in the series, but, um, I don't know, it just makes more sense to me, and, um, I feel like I'm using more strategy, I guess, um, like, in that I'm moving, I'm using, um, my attacks and abilities at points that make sense. Um, obviously that's going to get more and more complicated as I unlock different abilities and, uh, gain different party members and, um, you know, there's the whole blades and drivers system that if you want, like, a good explanation of that, like, I highly... Um, actually recommend watching the Nintendo Direct. Um, I, I, I sat down and watched the, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Nintendo Direct, uh, last night. Um, or no, two nights ago, the, the day before the game came out. And that kind of helped ground me in the world and the mechanics and everything. Um, I think that was really helpful, so, um, but also certainly not necessary. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think right now, like, I'm feeling pretty good about the combat, um, and then when you actually, uh, log in here, you have your drivers and your blade, uh, Rex is the driver, Pyra's the blade here, Nia's a driver, um, Dro March is her blade, and, uh, yeah, you have, um, these different, um, you have your different attacks that, uh, you can, um, okay, yeah, I think I want to do anchor shot, and, uh, you can strengthen them, level up your different attacks, wow, that, uh, you get weapon points, um, after battles in addition to experience points, and, uh, I think skill points would be this other one. Um, so here are like the different skills you can uh, grow. Um, and those kind of extend outwards. Um, and then with your uh, with your blades, you can also you can modify 
their weapons with uh, different chips. Um, huh. Let's uh, let's try that. Okay. Cool. Um, and then you have these uh, different areas of growth as well, which um, seem to kind of happen based on uh, like your actions, uh, less so than like some uh, point system. So that's uh, that's pretty interesting for the for the blades growth. But um, yeah, obviously lots of ways to grow your character, and that will uh, you know kind of continue to be. Uh, uh, continue to expand, I guess, um, as you know, your characters grow and you get more of them. Tough dude here. Oh, and uh, I guess like that kind of, um, I don't know, like Ghostbusters esque uh, proton beam that uh, Pyra is hitting me with right now. That is kind of like your connection to your blade and um, you know if you're in the uh, vicinity of them uh, they are you know helping power you up and such and actually um, you can with your characters equip certain accessories and um, one of the accessories I have um, you can extend the range of that so you can be a little a uh, little further away um, I don't really know how uh, how that mechanic works uh, necessarily um, so far um, oh wow that actually really increases my strength a lot I wonder if I should be equipping that. Increases auto attack damage by 30%. Wow, that's a lot. Increases maximum hit points. Man, there's a, there's a lot happening here. Um, I think I want to increase my attack, so I'm going to change that. I'm going to also drop my... Uh, I want to try this increasing auto attack damage and see what these two things increase. Uh... If, if battles go a little quicker, let's see. Um, this guy, because that's I just fought one of these. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, this seems to be going. Uh, Definitely going a bit faster than uh, the last time um, I fought one of these.
Whoa. Yeah, so uh, I just uh, I just did a, a combo attack. Uh, I did my uh, my kind of special move, and then uh, Nia followed it up with uh, with hers. I did I activated that just by pressing the uh, ZL button, and uh, that act that did some uh, some massive damage. So that was kind of a kind of like a Chrono Trigger. Ask uh, combo. It felt like there with that, uh, you know, her water and my uh, fire and making steam uh, for massive damage. That's pretty cool. Um, but also, my uh, pouch item just expired. So uh, your pouch item is basically like, um, I guess in like MMO terms or like I guess Monster Hunter terms, it's sort of your. Uh, you know, your boost, uh, item, I guess. And, uh, so as you can see here, the effects of this, uh, cloud sea shark, um, is less, uh, ether damage taken and less physical damage taken by, uh, 5% each, um, and the duration is 20 minutes. So that's, uh, yeah, it's basically just a buff that, um, you know, you put in your pouch and you have it for 20 minutes. And I do believe there's like cooking mechanics and there's uh, characters have different affinities to uh, to different foods. Um, so I think there's like a whole uh, a whole level of depth uh, to be kind of explored there as well. Back attack. me down it's a big hit um but up in the upper left corner there i had uh i had that meter that um there were kind of like three um spaces that could be filled in almost like a like a fighting game uh special tier meter and uh i had i had at I had two of those filled in, so uh, so Neo was able to just come over and revive me, um, which was uh, which was pretty nice there. But um, I think something I do like about uh, the Xenoblade games a lot is uh, death is not really a huge punishment. Um, you basically, if you die, your party gets wiped out. Um, Essentially, in these games, you typically just have to go back to, um, you know, your last checkpoint, but you don't lose any experience or items or anything, and it's, like, a really fast, uh, a really fast, uh, loading experience. Whoa, my goodness! Oh! <laughs> well, yeah, I guess I can show you the death mechanic right now. Um, as that dude just came out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, so I'm just, like, right back here. Um, no real harm done. Uh, yeah, and it seems like the checkpoints are frequent, the loading time is short, uh, 
yeah, it's a uh, it's it's a really uh, not punishing uh, system there, which is good because that encourages you to actually explore even when you have enemies roaming the fields that are level 81 giant hate monkeys. So uh, yeah, I think uh, you know I think that's that's something really cool about. Um, about this series that continues over into uh, into this game. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm pretty much out of things to say about the game. Um, so I think I'm going to uh, wrap up this video here. Um, but man, overall, this is this game is. Uh, I think I have a feeling this game is going to be my. Uh, my month of December. Um, I think I'm going to be playing uh, quite a bit of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 because I am, uh, I guess in the words of Shulk, uh, I'm really feeling it. Uh, so yeah, um, as for uh, what I do and what we do on the internet, uh, I have a podcast uh, called the Nintendo Fun Club Podcast. Uh, it is all about uh, Nintendo games and positivity and pop punk and all that good stuff. Um, wow, there's a lot of dudes over here. Um, yeah, you can check out our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Podbean, um, wherever. And... Uh, or you can just go to our blog, which is NintendoFunClubPodcast.com, and over there you'll find our um, our show notes, links to the episodes, uh, links to where you can get the episodes from in your podcast um, thingy that you use, uh, and then occasional blog posts um, and occasional videos uh, like. Um, like this one, or sometimes videos that are just gameplay without uh, me rambling uh, as well. Um, and then, yeah, obviously you can subscribe to our YouTube page. Uh, it's just uh, Nintendo Fun Club Podcast. It's our YouTube channel, which is uh, all this sort of stuff. Um, and yeah, I guess if you want to uh, follow me on Twitter, you can do that as well um, at Braun Dwarf, B-R-A-W-N-D-W-A-R-F. So um, yeah, I, th I guess uh, if you stuck through to this point, uh, thanks for uh, hanging out and uh, checking out Xenoblade Chronicles 2 with me. Uh, which is a super awesome game that I love and I want to just keep playing. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, cool. Well, thanks again for, uh, tuning in and I will catch you next time. Goodbye.